For years, I've been covering Hunter Biden using his family name, both during and after his dad's term as VP to make shady financial deals abroad. We did a full hour on Hunter Biden separating fact from fiction on last Friday's show. It's a real story that deserves sober, unbiased coverage. But shady use of the family name is not a partisan issue. And if you care about the Hunter Biden story, as we do, then you must also care about the news about Jared Kushner's huge investment from the Saudi government. The New York Times reports, and now many others confirming, that two former top Trump administration officials, former Treasury Sec Secretary Steven Mnuchin and the former president's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner, received billions of investments into their new private equity funds from the Saudi government just six months after leaving the White House. Kushner's firm, Affinity Equity, picked up a $2 billion investment from the Saudi's $620 billion public investment fund, which is led by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The investment came despite the fact that the Saudi fund's staff reportedly raised concerns over Kushner's inexperience in private equity, as well as objections that the kingdom was responsible for, quote, the bulk of the investment and risk. Translation, we may be throwing this money away. But somehow the fund's leader rejected this advice and gave Kushner the money anyway. According to SEC filings from March 31, Affinity reported that its main fund managed around $2.5 billion, most of which came from the massive Saudi investment. It's fair to ask why the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which also owns stakes in Uber as well as Newcastle United Soccer Club and England's Premier League, would make such a big bet on such an unproven firm like Affinity. Just like it's totally fair to ask why Ukrainian or Chinese energy companies would do business with Hunter Biden. And just like some of the shadier aspects of the Hunter Biden story, his board seat with Burisma, the diamond he was gifted by a Chinese executive, the Kazakh businessman who seemingly paid for a nearly $150,000 car for Hunter, there are major red flags in the Kushner story that deserve a closer look. It's not all apples to apples. I'm not saying it's all equal, but I make the comparison to try to remind everyone to take the politics out of it. Let's just focus on the issue. To begin with, the amount that the PIF put into Kushner's fund pales in comparison to what they gave to former Secretary Mnuchin. This despite Mnuchin's history as a former Goldman Sachs executive with at least a track record of investing in Hollywood productions. Mnuchin also helped save a failing California bank before joining the government. According to the Times, the Saudi fund invested a billion dollars in Mnuchin's Liberty Strategic Capital. Not only did Kushner's firm get double that investment, but there's more. The Saudis apparently agreed to pay Mnuchin's firm just a 1% management fee while paying 1.25% to Kushner's affinity. On a $2 billion investment, that pays Kushner's firm $25 million a year just in fees, not including any share of profits. The question becomes, was this payback or are they betting on Trump for the future? Jared is said to have developed a friendship with the Saudi crown prince during Trump's time in the White House. Kushner helped broker an $110 billion arms deal with the kingdom and helped shield that deal and others from backlash after the murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi and the Saudi-led conflict in Yemen. Now, I know some on each side of the partisan divide are going to accuse me of whataboutism here. Liberals are going to say this is much worse than anything that Hunter Biden did. Conservatives are going to say it's not true and that Hunter's story should have been reported earlier and more vigorously, etc. Look, just like those on the left need to admit that the Hunter Biden investigation is a real story, it should be covered, those on the right should accept that there are very fair questions to ask about Jared's deal with the Saudis. Not to mention Ivanka's Chinese trademarks, which maybe we'll get into if we have time, but even the perception of these sorts of conflicts is a problem. There has to be a way for those of us who just want transparency and honesty to take the politics out of it and be able to question all of these seemingly shady deals. Let's bring in Walter Schaub senior ethics fellow for the Project on Government Oversight and the former director of the U.S. Office of Government Ethics. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Let me first ask you the most obvious question. Are these fair questions to ask 
about this investment in Kushner's firm? I think these are absolutely fair questions to ask. I don't think anyone is suggesting that something illegal has happened here. But what's troubling and should trouble everyone in the American public is that a top administration official had extensive dealings with the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, MBS, and has now entered into a business deal that doesn't make any sense. His advisors are saying that the firm that Jared Kushner has set up is totally unqualified for this. Jared Kushner doesn't have investment experience of the sort that Steve Mnuchin has. It's just simply a nonsensical deal, and it raises the specter that maybe uh, what MBS is paying for here is something other than the hope of a high return. You have to wonder, is this repaying favors? Is this trying to cozy up in case Trump becomes president again in 2025? And I think these are questions we can't get answers to on our own because the White House is exempt from the Freedom of Information Act. So we can't even request records or information. Uh, this is deeply troubling. And I think the American public should be asking these questions. How do you think the questions surrounding the story um, compare to the questions surrounding Hunter's business dealings? I'm not asking you to tell me which one is worse, et cetera. I'm just asking you, you know, how do the questions that people ask about this compare? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to, as you have done, set them up as very different cases. For me, the line that always concerns me the most is the use of governmental power. And so my concern is wanting to know whether or not Jared Kushner used governmental power to help the Saudis. In the case of Hunter Biden, I personally find Hunter Biden's business practices unsavory. I find his making an entire career out of being Joe Biden's son unsavory. But the line I draw is I'm looking for any evidence that Joe Biden used governmental power to help his son. And so far, I haven't seen those. So I think they're two very different questions. I think we can judge Hunter Biden uh, as a citizen who seems to be profiteering off of his relationship to a high government official and frown on that. But I think the government ethics issues are all in the Jared Kushner issue, where we need to know if American foreign policy is being carried out in the best interest of the American people, or if it's being carried out to uh, feather Jared Kushner's nest. But how do, how do, you, how do you assess? I don't see, think there's any way to truly assess that. And I don't just mean in this situation. I mean, in a lot of situations where a foreign government or a particular entity or group is betting on someone for the future, right? And they say, well, you know what? We're gonna invest in this company or we're gonna take this person on, et cetera. And who knows what might happen in the future? I mean, as an ethical matter, it's very hard to implicate someone or an entity for that, is it not? Yeah, and that's why the best ethics rules don't depend on an assessment of individual character or uh, weighing subjective factors. We have a very weak ethics system in our government, and we need stronger rules. There should be rules that draw bright lines, such as you will not go into business with a foreign government for five years after leaving the White House or after leaving a cabinet position. That would be a nice bright line. And then we don't have to speculate whether a particular official is the kind of person who would sell out the country to try to gain a benefit in the future. And we have a lot of questions about Saudi Arabia here. The Trump administration and Jared Kushner did everything they could to help MBS after the murder of J Jamal Khashoggi. The administration sold arms to the Saudis using presidential emergency authority over the objection of Congress. Uh, so there's ample evidence that this administration, this past administration did a lot to help Saudi Arabia. And we shouldn't have to wonder if they did that for personal benefit. And the way to achieve that going forward is to create rules that draw bright lines that don't depend on the assessment of subjective factors or individual character. They just simply say you're barred for a period of time. Yep, um, and I think, Walter, the way I always say to people is, you know, because people will hear these things and they'll immediately attribute partisan motivations to it. And I say, 
just assume for a moment that it was the other side. Assume for a moment that the exact same fact pattern occurred, and yet it was someone of the political uh, party that you support or you oppose, and then think about what, you th what, what you'd feel about it. Anyway, Walter, thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.